seems like almost every software company is embracing artificial intelligence. Evernote is on its second go-round with AI. I've been using it quite extensively, and I want to share some thoughts about how it works and how you can get the most from it. Hi, I'm Dave Edwards, a certified Evernote expert. That means I took a comprehensive exam to get certified, but I don't work for Evernote, so I can be independent in my thoughts. I also have two online courses you might find helpful. Evernote for Beginners helps you set up and use Evernote, whether you're brand new or just want to learn more. And Getting Things Done with Evernote demonstrates how you can use Evernote to build a strong productivity system inside. Find out more about both courses at DaveEdwardsMedia.com and just click on the course button. So if you've been keeping track, Evernote launched its AI cleanup tool in May of 2023. It was designed to help with formatting and cleaning up your notes. I used it, but really wasn't overly impressed. I mean, I'm pretty good about taking notes that are meaningful to me, and I've never found that the AI cleanup tool was really all that helpful. It was a feature I knew existed, but never made it part of my daily routine. So now Evernote has relaunched their AI tool. It has been renamed AI Edit, and I like it. So let's take a look. So what I've done is I grabbed an article on travel uh, from the New York Times, and I pasted it into a note. I do this a lot. I find articles that I want to keep, that I want to read, and uh, so I just grabbed them in here. Ironically, this article refers to AI as well. Take a look here. In the uh, right corner, you see a button called AI Edit. So this is a new location uh, for it as well. If you click on the button here, it will ask you to select the text that you want to work with. So we'll select this. Now, when we come over here, it gives us a number of options. The first uh, thing you can select is the Summarize tool. Now, it will take all of the text that I've just highlighted and synthesize it into a one paragraph summary. So let's see how fast this works here. We want a paragraph. And oh, there it is. So in one little paragraph, it has summarized uh, this entire article. All right. So let's come back here again and say summarize, but now I want an extended version of the summary. And now, as you can see, I, I think this is actually more helpful than the one paragraph summary. Or we can come over here and we can click summary again and say, give me the bullets. And now it has given me one, two, three, four, five bullets uh, that uh, I can then cut and paste into my document. And that's what I like to do. I, I will uh, grab these and then I'll put it at the top of my document. So if I want to share this with someone or refer to the article later, uh, I can just look at the quick summary or I can read the entire article. Now, the next thing I want to show you is the fixed typos. I mean, I can spell, but I'm not an accurate typist, so this really helps me. Uh, I've been using Grammarly for things that I write, but so far this has really been helpful for things that I create inside of Evernote. So we say click typos, and it runs through my entire text that I have highlighted, and hopefully the New York Times hasn't made too many mistakes. And this is the cleaned up version. I can ask it to help me write an introduction. So what it's done here is it's taken the information and given me a nice introductory paragraph, uh, similar to what the New York Times has, uh, has written, but obviously uh, putting it in slightly different words. It can also uh, create a conclusion or even find a suitable tire, uh, title if I don't want to use uh, this title here. Now, obviously, if I'm, if I'm working with something that already has a title, I don't need this feature. But if I'm writing a long essay or a paper, uh, that would be a nice, nice feature to have. Translate is, as we suggest, it would allow me to translate this document into any other language. Let's try Russian. 
Now, if I have any Russian speakers, you can uh, look at this and tell me how accurate the translation is because I don't speak Russian. This is obviously taking a little bit longer uh, to do this entire article, uh, but I'll bet you if I had just asked it to do one paragraph, it would do it relatively quickly. And here is the version in Russian. I wish I could read this and tell you if it is accurate or not. And there's one other uh, button here, and that is change tone. So, uh, for example, I used to teach a college class, and uh, we used to uh, uh, write different stories aimed at different age levels. Uh, you would uh, tell a story, let's say like this, very differently if you talk to young people as opposed to talking to adults about this. Uh, the same thing might apply if you want to write something more formal, as in a college essay, or if you want to write something more casually to send to a friend. Uh, that's where this uh, change tone feature uh, will come in handy. I say will come in handy because it's not quite available yet. I think it will be a valuable feature once they get this added. None of this is revolutionary, of course, but what I like is that I now have access to tools that I've used from other programs while using Evernote in parallel. That means I don't need to plug something into Grammarly to check for typos and spelling errors. I don't need to cut and paste a document into ChatGPT in order to prepare a summary or a title or an intro. Anytime I can stay inside of Evernote without having to go elsewhere is good for me and you and for Evernote as it builds loyalty. I should also point out that AI Edit is in beta, so it might change, it might evolve. And I have a feeling it's going to evolve. So if you open AI Edit and it looks a little bit different from what I'm showing you today, well, that's why. I'm gonna keep using AI Edit and I will share any new features or changes with you. Hey, subscribe, you won't miss any of those videos or anything else I post about. Just click that subscribe button below.